Morning, everybody. So for all those home baristas out there that love having their morning coffee, their morning latte, they go to their favorite place, they get uh, all this beautiful latte art. What I'm gonna do this morning is show everyone how to make uh, some of the most basic latte art, uh, the Rosetta. So what you need is you need a good espresso machine, good grinder, and then obviously a really good pouring pitcher. This one I have here is from uh, Espro. So from the fridge, gonna start by grabbing uh, milk. Now when using milk to get proper uh, latte foam, they call it microfoam, uh, using uh, homogenized 3% whole milk, some people call it, is probably the best just because uh, the more fat the better. Obviously you're not gonna be able to use something like 35% cream or 18% or something like that, table cream. You're gonna wanna use like a three or a 2% milk to get your best results. So uh, it's gonna be a little bit noisy, but start by grinding your beans fresh. gonna end up looking like this. This little thing I have here, this little uh, mat pad is just to protect my counters. So um, just give it a proper tamp. It takes about 30 pounds of pressure. Again, I'm using an Espro tamper. Uh, it's weighted and uh, sprung, so I know exactly how much I want. Just make sure that you clean those edges. Those dirty edges is what ends up getting up into the uh, into the brew head and, uh, and kind of clogs the gasket and then it ends up getting back into your coffee. So one of the things that I always like to do whenever I'm doing this is I always like to purge the machine. So the whole point of why you would purge a machine is really so that you can uh, get all of those little bits that are still stuck back into it. And to purge the machine, just turn it on, turn it off and you'll notice that uh, there's a little bit of like micro particles that are still left in there. As Soon as you're done that, get it up right away, start it. Takes about 25 seconds. I'll do a video at some point on, on freshly roasting coffee. Um, I roast my own at home, but as you can see, it's coming up pretty nicely. Again, it doesn't start off that quick, but it takes about 25 seconds. Once your coffee and your shot's been pulled, you just wanna get the, uh, the actual espresso out because you don't want that sitting up inside the machine. Just tap it out. Purge it. And then turn your steam wand on. So one of the things that I always think is important is obviously purging the steam wand as well. When you turn off the espresso machine, there's gonna be water that's gonna not all the way run out of it. It's gonna get stuck in there and then when you go to turn the machine on, the boiler is gonna work, it's gonna create steam. But there's obviously not a boiler between the inside of the machine and here. So there's gonna be a bunch of water that gets stuck and then the steam just goes back. You don't want that adding into your milk. As you can see how much water is actually going into it right now, that would end up back into your milk and that would just kind of dilute and thin your milk down. So once it starts, the steam starts being created, you can turn it off, let it build up a little bit higher and discard all of this. Again, you wanna act fairly quickly because that crema is gonna start dissipating and that's really what's gonna help you get kind of those designs. So turn it on again. You can see it's going straight to steam, ready to get my milk in. You wanna use very, very, very cold milk. Um, it just seems to foam better. For about a five ounce drink, I'm adding about uh, three ounces of milk and then that's gonna be stretched. You wanna put the tip of the uh, of the steam wand just below the surface of the milk, get it in and then turn it on. You want the milk to circulate in a circular motion. If you hear a really high hissing pitch throughout the uh, process of steaming the milk, it's probably because uh, you're scorching the milk and you either have the steam wand too close to the bottom of the pitcher or it's creating pressure unevenly. Uh, you do not want that. You want it to be just this really slight kind of bubble sound. But as you can start feeling the milk, I like holding it the side there because you can feel it. You never want milk to really get up to a boil when it comes to there because there's sugars and fat and everything starts to break down. 
but as it starts getting too hot to handle for your hand, that's probably the point where you want to get off because then it'll be too hot for your mouth too. But as I'm kind of pulling the, uh, the steam wand away from the milk, it's actually stretching the milk and you can kind of hear those bubbles as I'm just kind of breaking the surface right now. And it's to the point now where it's getting really hot. I don't remove the wand until the steam's completely come out, otherwise you're gonna create unnecessarily massive bubbles. And then you wanna knock that air out. Give it a spin. And what it should look like when you're done is, it should have the look of wet paint when you're, when you're spinning it around, wet white paint. So I like the handle facing me when doing rosettas just because then when you drink it, I'm right-handed, I see it in front of my face. But like I said, from high, you start, you spin the milk around, and then loosely you just start wiggling it back and forth, and then pulling it through. And that's what's gonna give you that nice rosetta look. Hopefully this helps you guys. If you like these videos, uh, give it a thumbs up. Definitely subscribe. I'm gonna be posting more videos on food and coffee, how to roast, how to do more latte art, um, how to make pizzas, everything like that. So just make sure you subscribe and uh, thanks for watching.